What's up, loves? Welcome to Mama's Cocktail Hour. How's everybody doing? It's Saturday, folks. Come on over. Hey, cuz, what's going on? I'm drinking lots of water because I'm drinking and I do not want to get dehydrated. So you're going to see me sipping my little Essentia and then, of course, my wine. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> hey, girl. Hey, Anissa. What's going on? Girl, you may need to jump in this conversation, so stay around. We're going to definitely be doing that today. We're going to be having conversations Okay, we also have a guest, LJ Rivera. He's from a podcast as well. He's gonna be coming on, giving a quick male perspective on everything. So super excited to have him on the show today. All right, so guys, we are gonna try to work to do three. I put up six, but it's three. Don't mind me. We've been having some difficulties, so let's hope tonight is a good night and Instagram lets us live. Please, Instagram. Okay, so we have to battle already. Get All right. <laughs> My son. <laughs> Your son wants to be watching some Mama's Cocktail Hour tonight. He's like, tell, oh, him, tell, him what the, um, tell him what the topic is. I'm not going to tell him what the topic is. <laughs> He'll die. <laughs> he don't want to hear his mama's, his, no 19-year-old want to hear his mama's opinion on how cultural, how the way we were brought up affects sex, sex life. <laughs> All right. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> <clears throat> so before we bring LJ on, how's everybody doing? I hope you guys have been checking out some of the stuff that's been happening lately at Mama's. It's yes. been amazing. Exciting. Jazz, tell them a little bit about Tuesday Talks. Tuesday Talks. So Tuesday Talks is going. It's actually going really well. Um, for you guys who don't know, Tuesday Talks is on every Tuesday on Mama's Cocktail Hour at 8 o'clock. Um, and I just basically come on and just basically run through things that have happened in my life and the lessons that I uh, learned and still learning. Um, it's been going really well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys have been super supportive, um, really encouraging. And please don't hesitate to um, let me know if there's anything specific you want to talk about. Also, starting this Tuesday, I am also going to be trying to bring people on onto Tuesday Talk. Um, anyone who has questions or maybe wants to give opinions on whatever story or experience I'm sharing. So really excited. So check, check it out. out. Check out Tuesday Talks with Jazz, guys. It's super what, dope. What, what about That's Dope with Zeta Lisa? Yeah, so um, I have That's Dope. I did my first episode and I am currently working on episode two because I just, I don't want it to be something that I don't feel passionate about or a person I don't feel passionate about. So I'm, I'm working on finding that individual. And I think I have found someone. So um, we should probably be seeing that's dope coming up soon, possibly next week. And we can't wait because it was awesome. The first episode was super awesome. And you get to see Zeta Lisa in a real intimate kind of setting. And you get to start to know her really good. She's, she's all of this. But she's also a lot more. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was, you know, and it's so funny because when I did that episode, Jasmine was like, I need you to be more vulnerable. And I'm like, what? I am vulnerable. I tell you guys all the fucking time what's going on in my <laughs> Zeta way. But no, it was, it's definitely a new side of me. So check that out. Tuesday, uh, Tuesday Talks with Jazz, check it out and check out uh, That's Dope with Zeta Lisa. Nancy G has some stuff going on with serenity now so be on the lookout for some of her cooking some of her serenity videos that you can catch in the morning before your way to work mm -hmm. to give you some serenity and some motivation so you don't kick people's asses while on the job 
for real, it'd be hard sometimes, but <laughs> how, vid how videos help. Also, don't forget to check out Mama's Cocktail Hour throughout the week because we post reels, we post videos, we post quotes. Um, we've been really working on trying to keep that up to date for you guys um, and just sharing as much as we can when it comes to Mama's stuff. Yeah, absolutely, guys. So check out the page. You never know who we're going to be interviewing next, what we're going to be doing next. So check out our stories and our page that you guys can be informed. So without further ado, we're going to shut our mouths up. We're going to bring our guests on. LJ, you coming on. And we are going to talk how culture can affect your sex life. Let's do it, oh. guys. Yeah. Hold on one second. Work, 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 work. <laughs> guys, sure. if you don't know... We've been having a lot of technical difficulties with these things. <clears throat> so, oh, I see it moving. Three, three. Yay! Uh, three. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yay. I can hear you perfectly fine. Oh, okay. not it. I can kick it out. <laughs> Don't jinx it. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to Mama's Cocktail Hour. Um, I am your host, Zeta Lisa. And I am Jasmine Luisa. And we are so happy to have you here. So I definitely had to do my little spiel for you. Um, I've been watching your page. I love your stuff. You had me dying with the bodega video because I was like, yo, that's definitely me, yo. <laughs> Waiting for $2 cheese, especially white queso. Yo. <laughs> I, mean, I, yeah, I mean, I grew up with that just waiting. Like, I had $2.20 like that. Doesn't yeah. care that's for $2. The guy be like, okay, it's two dollars and three cents. No, no, hook it up, please. Hook it up with two dollars. Two twenty five, yo, please. Yo, it's so relatable though. It is so relatable. Absolutely. I mean, do you see the Nestle, Nestle Quick I had in my hand too? You know, back in the day it's food stamps, you know? You gotta take the Nestle Quick on one hand, the orange juice, you know, basic stuff. Yo, I didn't realize the Nestle Quick. Yeah. That's I got sick man. off a of Nestle Quick one time. I don't know. My mom bought one from the bodega that was bad. God knows what was in there. <laughs> My grandma. I used to drink Yuhu. I used to OD on that. Oh, the really? Yuhus? Oh, yeah. Yo, you used to just put the, so much sugar in the bottom, and then at the end, you just drink, drinking all the little sugar, the little red. Oh, ones. my you know, they God. Used to do that back in the day? That's such a boy shit, thing to for do. real. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a boy thing okay. to do. <laughs> all right, LJ, tell us a little bit about you. For everybody who doesn't know, let us know on um, who is LJ? What's going on? What you got going on? Well, First things first, born and raised in New York City, you know. Born actually in Brooklyn, Queens. Uh, jumped back and forth for now living in the suburbs, Jersey. Different lifestyle. But um, my page and our podcast is pretty much just a background story of what we go through in everyday life. I think sometimes we go through stuff and we don't have people that we could support each other or actually relate to it. And sometimes people don't realize that we actually do. A lot of things we do, somebody out there has the exact same story or something similar so bringing people in and just having normal authentic conversations nothing script just straight up honest conversation and you'll be surprised because uh through my career i have worked like case management okay and i've always been lucky enough to have people open up to me because they feel like i bring a comfort zone to them and sometimes i'll be like wow if someone would have heard this story maybe someone else could relate to it mm. so my old background with this is that through my career and to my personal life, I try to mentor people in my life. Okay. Some were great mentors. Some went off. Uh, I lost some friends in my life that I really feel like, wow, I tried helping them out, but it wasn't there. You can't people so please everybody. Is, yeah. You can't people please you everybody. Can. But sometimes it's like, a, you know, when you're young and you're, you're curious, you want to just, you know, observe and it's like a sponge, take everything in. Right, right. And then when you see someone younger than you or someone going through the same path, you're like, wait a minute, I went through that path. That was a shitty path. I don't want you to go through it. So when, Sometimes people don't listen. You know. So when did you start your podcast? I started a year ago during the pandemic. So what happened was, you know, when this whole thing with COVID started and everything, I had a little rough You're not allowed to say that word. <laughs> Which one? Which word? The oh. C word. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Well, put it this way. Before that, I used to just take drafts, thinking about, you know what? I want to get into radio. I want to expand the message. And, you know, I got scared with the C word. You know, the unknown was coming out. And I'm like, you know what? Before anything happens to me, before any crazy thing, God forbid, happens to me, 
let me just let it all out. Fuck it. Live it, love it, fuck it. Just air it out there. Wow. I mean, you to listen to my podcast, it was tough because all I had to do was go to YouTube and I said, okay, how to make a podcast out of these people. And honestly, it was scary. I had very great support from great friends that supported me through this process. But um, it was tough, you know? I got and it. now, I'm lucky. I made a year. I made a year now. So I'm very, I'm very grateful now. We are, we, it's okay. We, we mamas, so we understand the baby. <laughs> You're about to see a Zoe side. Hey, yeah, yeah, definitely. But no, I think that's dope. I, I love, I love how um, you speak so freely. And I think that's, that's our mission kind of here at Mama's Cocktail Hours, just to be authentic, be real, don't filter. As you see, we talk how we, we want to talk because it's important. People need to find people who are relatable, who are like them, who are like-minded. Um, you know, um, there's something so amazing about the everyday. There's yeah. something, there's something so unique, even though it's not because it's every day, but to have it on social media where a lot of times things are kind of like gloss made glossy and pretty. Um, there's something really refreshing about just having like everyday people talk about everyday things. Yeah. And we say everyday, right. <laughs> and we say everyday things, but those everyday things really impact our lives. And I think it's great that we can come on here and we can just talk and we can share and we can be like, like what you said, oh, I, I wasn't the only one going through that. Or shit, I had this question too. Or you, I'm not the only one that thinks like that. Yeah. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to everybody coming on. Cookie, what's up? Cookie is in the comments at Mama's Cocktail Hour, folks. Hi, Cookie. Cookie, what's going on? A lot of everybody jumping on. We got Joshua on here, Notorious Moms Podcast. What's going on, guys? So, yeah, shout out to my guy, DJ Wonder Rican. He's a yo, this is a ill DJ right here. DJ Wonder Rican. Oh, let's, podcast with him. let's shout him out. Yo, shout out. To FM Radio. He does some, some, if you know anyone who's, who like to sing music, clean version, he will actually play your stuff in the radio. So, and in TikTok too. So, you know, try to talk to him what, later on. What is, his name? Has, what is his name again? DJ Wonderican. DJ Wonderican. Oh, that's awesome. Shout out to him. <laughs> uh, maybe you could get some Mama's Cocktail Hour played. <laughs> Let me stop. Um, all right. So let's jump to the topic, guys. The topic is how culture can, your culture's views on sex can impact Cultural. your, can impact your sexual life. What do you think about that, LJ? And you know what they mean, guys. Wow. Hold on. Let's break it down for what? Break it down first. Say that. Explain it. Let's, let's all explain. Awesome. Let's just all explain what we get, by, get from that first. So my perspective is how you were raised in your household when it came to sex is how sex, how, how you're going to play out sex in your relationship is how I took it. Cultural views, I, I, I take it in the same way. Cultural views is kind of like a little bit of everything. How you were brought up, maybe religious views, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. upbringing. That's a good, right. Um, how your parents thought about it, how it was explained to you, your surroundings. I think it's a little bit of all of that and how that affected how you view and do the do as an adult. <laughs> all right, LJ. My family was different. My, my family was different. My mom had me as a teenager. Like right after high school, she had me. So her thing was, you're gonna fall in love, and then you're gonna have sex. And then when you go to junior high school, and in high school, you're like, every girl's telling you, well, you know, I'm already a woman, so I'm already experienced. So unless you got experience, I'm not gonna waste my time with you. And I'm like, what? Oh. What? What junior high school your ass went to? <laughs> I went to Brooklyn. I went to Brooklyn, and it was it. Look, let me explain something to you. That, that when I think about culture, I think about what they tell you growing up. And keep in mind, so I'm 35, turning 36 real soon, so there was no internet back then. So whoever talked to you when you're young, that's what you're going to believe. So, you know, the, the whole hood dudes from the, hood, from the corner of their guys, and the guys in front of the building, they'll give you advice about relationships and love and all that. And you'll listen to it. But, you know, I think when it comes to all that, when, when you go to junior high school, that's when you really spend time interacting. You see people, like, getting together, hooking up already. You go to hooky parties and all that. You see Wait, hold like, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What age did you lose your virginity? Because this sounded like 10 or 9. Like, I, don't know. I lost it at 14. How about oh, you? Four, okay, okay. No, I was a lot older, folks. I was 18, 19 years old. My mother was, was a plane. My mom I was going to beat my ass. Yo, I was 16, and it was six months after my sweet 16. My mother almost beat my ass when she found out. 
because <laughs> she had spent all that money on a sweet 16. <laughs> Six you wasn't later. sweet anymore, girl. <laughs> I mean, I mean, let me ask you something. Let me, let me, let me ask you a question on that. When you're young, I feel like we. I know we talked about this in my old podcast. When you get young, when you're young, you don't want to mess around with body counts. You, you want to stay like pure for yeah. that right one. Right. You know, you want to be like, yeah, I want to be that one. I want to fall in love, that first love, because that's what they tell you. You're gonna find the right chick. You're gonna find the right person. You're gonna fall in love, and you're gonna be happy. Yeah, wait, right? so wait, so guys think like that too? So okay, so I know. For I mean, in the beginning, friends, back then. Back then, so back then, that was different. Now it's like, I need to get better, really good at it. So by the time I get older, you know, the person's not going to judge you by it. Because now it's all about judgment. Because the internet tells you a different story. Pornhub, you know, shout out to them for giving you for mind fucking everybody. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> it definitely, I, you know, it's so funny because I have conversations with my son about that. Because my son is watching porn at this age. And I'm like, listen, that shit is for the birds. Like, just know that that's not going to be your sex life, dude. Ever. That's not, never. <laughs> So get it out your mind. But all right, guys, what he's saying, we got a couple of guys in the comments. I just want to um, shout them out. Cookie says, sometimes people are learning from outside misinformation or maybe not having communication from a parent or parents in the household. The sex talk may not happen at home. Facts. I couldn't agree more. Facts, um, sex was definitely a taboo thing. It was something that they would like put you in like my I know I remember when my parents talked to me about sex it was like we were at the kitchen table they sat down like I did something wrong it was very intimidating it was like okay now you're a woman you got your period so now you can get you can get pregnant and I was like you know wait, so wait they t they had that conversation with you when you when you first got your period yeah Damn, that's a lot of information. To, that's a lot of... <laughs> and mind you guys, I got my period very young. It was I was very young. I wasn't... I was younger than 10 or 11, okay? So I was traumatized. Wow. So automatically... And my father was the type of man who would always be like, if you got pregnant, don't come back. So I, I definitely looked at sex early on in my, in my childhood or my early teens as something like you don't do. And if you do, if you do or doing the do, then you being Easy. ratchet. Yeah, not even like you're being mis mischievous. Like you're not. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like you're not, be, you're not. You're not a good you're not girl. Good. You're not exactly. a good girl no more. That, That's what that it is. Something that is that, that is so true. Go ahead. Go ahead. The held over the head with the good girl image. Um, I grew up with Spanish parents, and it was. And which is crazy to me because my mom had me at 15, but right. they were still very prevalent about like, you got to be a good girl. Make sure you wear shorts under your dresses. You close right. your legs. Yep. You don't find yourself in certain situation with boys. Yep. Like, because you have to hold yourself to a certain esteem, right? Because if you don't, then they're not they're, the real good one or the one that's meant to marry you is not going to want you. Yeah. So that was always from the very beginning put in our minds. I think we, we also, and I don't know if any females can in the comments relate. Um, it's Cookie says he was set in fear instead of communication. My father always ruled by fear, Cookie. So that's a good point. He always ruled by fear. And I feel like anything that he was trying to teach me in life, he would, he would try to relate to um, when I, one day when I get my husband. So it's like, if you got to cook and clean because one day when you get your husband, he's not going to want to be with you, like that type of stuff. I know, LJ, you had a comment, so go ahead, love. No, I was looking at this a comment, one of my old friends, where it says it right there, that it's true, that when I was saying it's true, and so you get heartbroken for the first time. Sometimes that whole, like, I call it cloud nine view, like, yay, I have a girlfriend, and I went through the whole process of dating, and eventually it's going to lead to more first base, second base, you know, back in the days. But then you realize when they break up with you, and you're like, damn, you know what, you're broken hearted, and then you mess around with other people when you're young, because you when you're young, you're just thinking about the basics. Think about sex at class. Literally, the first time I went to sex ed class, it was straight up. Here's a picture. Here's a VHS video of all the shit you could get. Yeah. No. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember that? That sex education. But, but here's, here's the tricky part about that. When you're in class, you're like, oh, damn, that's, that sucks. That's scary. I don't want this shit happening to me. You have a young girl next to me telling me, oh, guess what? I do it all the time. And it feels good. And it's fun. And you know what? One day when you're a man, you get to do it too. And I'd be like, Damn, so my luck with you is I think it's you, and I think I don't have the experience for you. I'm gonna wow. tell you a funny story about this. I'm gonna tell you a funny story when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, I went to a hooky party, 
And I remember they, Hold was, on. they put us in the closet. Explain to me what the fuck a hooky party is, please, for everybody in the comments. You so wait, wait, hold on. You never been to a hooky party? No. No. No, come on. I'm no. dead. Comments, anyone <laughs> hooky party? So you cut school like on a special specific day. So there's always one friend that has their parents that work like a long day job. Okay. Have an open crib. And you guys go over. You know, you get the Colt 45. You get the, you know, the Cisco liquor bottles. And, you know, get 50 cent sodas. And you have some fun. You know? And then you play Spin the Bottle. You play some reggae music. Yo, back then, Sean Paul, Headside, you know. Headside. Kill it with, you know. <laughs> you, know? you know, matter of fact, we used to have reggae gold. The CD. I don't know if you used to have oh, reggae gold. The CD. I have reggae gold. Now you bring it back some memories. <laughs> so, so we this is our I used to go to. I used to go to a hooky party, and there was one girl, uh, Puerto Rican girl, very cute. I was like, I had no skills whatsoever. So she's like, yo, you and me, we have to go to the closet. I'm like, all right, cool, I'm down. And I'm like, yo, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little nervous. My heart is beating. And she's like, what, you never done nothing before? I'm like, no. I'm, at the time I was 13, I'm only 13. Well, I'm going to teach you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna These are some fast-ass <laughs> girls, no judgment. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was different. You know why it was different? Because that's all I knew. I thought when you know you're, you're growing up, it's the same age. But I feel like that's when I figured that. Hey, listen, maybe women develop differently. Maybe they, you know, they feel mature. Though. They were women. You know, there were people in the ninth grade. Used to always talk about having kids already. Like, oh, they're ready to become moms, or they're taking care of. All, like they feel like they're women. Look, when I was young, that's a very. I dated someone. That, that, like, that's a very good point, and and I I just want to stop you there really quickly, just so I can make that point because I think that. I, I did see that. I went to school in Queens, too. I went to mm -hmm. St. John's Prep High School, a Catholic high school in Queens. And there was a couple of girls in ninth grade who got pregnant. But I can't lie. I can understand what you're saying. They were very motherly. They wanted to do that. They wanted to have a baby. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm just thinking, like, at that age, wouldn't your priorities be different? You know? But they, they seem very maternal. Like, that was what they wanted. You know what I realized a lot? We all were going through something at home, a lot of us, mm -hmm. when you're young. Sometimes you go to school as a safe haven, like a comfort zone to escape what you have at home. Right. And sometimes you feel like school is the closest thing you have to feel like being yourself. And I remember growing up, I seen that. You know, people start drinking. I'm like, wow, you're drinking? I ain't gonna lie to you. Cold 45, that was nasty back in the day. Yeah, it is. That more liquor. No, that's you know, still currently you know. nasty now. Facts. Hey, like gasoline. <laughs> No, no, no. 151 is gasoline. And I drank that back in the day. No, thank God they expired that anymore. But I think what I'm trying to think when it comes to culture is that we see something. Remember, man, there's no internet. So all you're doing is listening to what people say and what you see with your eyes. Okay. So, you know, I think when I was in fifth grade, in sixth grade, when I started seeing people kiss and, you know, the whole concept, like, okay, if I like you, you like me. If you say, hey, you know, you think I'm cute, but then we're on a date. <laughs> Hold on. So oh, let's get back a little bit. What happened in that room? I mean, in that closet. Oh, the room? <laughs> oh, yeah. So you took me. So check it out. I was nervous. My heart was beating. I'm like, yo, I don't know what to do. And she's like, don't worry. Just close your eyes and open your mouth. I'm like, all right. What's going to happen? So, you know, God. use your imagination for a second base only. And I'm thinking, okay, this is it. This is the whole bullshit. Like, this is what the big deal is about. And I'm thinking in my head, like, this is what people go crazy over. I'm like, fuck it. It is what it is. But then I realized, damn, if it wasn't for her being that cool with me, it would, you know, maybe it would be more embarrassing for me because later on I saw someone else do the same thing in a room and that girl just cracked on this guy. Like, oh, he's a little boy. That's why I don't mess with little boys because you don't know what you're doing. I'm a grown ass woman. I'm thinking in my head, holy shit. These you know? girls were advanced. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, let's, let's face this. As I grew up, this also I learned about age. This is another thing about age I learned when I was young. When I was young, 13, 14, if you ask a girl out, you think, you know, around your age, that's what most likely happened. There were girls going out with guys that are in high school, like, already seniors already and college graduates already. Oh, yeah. They're like, yo, I got my car. I got my car. He's like, if you don't let you have a car, I'm not going to fuck with you. Oh, that's like, well, true. I got a bicycle. We talk about that. <laughs> I got a bike. Because that's, that's true. We talk about that because you know why? Because there was a lot of, that was, there was a lot of girls dealing, dealing with guys in college when they was in eighth grade. So there's yeah. no competition for that because... But well, that was people. normal, though. But I'm saying growing up, you see that, you're like, damn, I wish I had a car. Or, well, damn, you know, all I have is a bike. That was normal. I went to high school in Washington Heights, and it was very normal at the end of a school day to see grown men because you could obviously tell they were grown men waiting to pick up my classmates um, and, and drive them, them home. And or... drive. 
Yeah, drive them home, drive her and her girlfriends home. Well, you see, that's the, that's the image. That's the image, because you know what? You know, that's showing off, because you know damn well, oh, you know, I have a boyfriend who's going to pick me up in his Honda Civic, blasting the speakers in the trunk, mm-hmm. and you and I'm yes. And then now you look back at it and you'd be like, it's a curve, bro. He's a 26, picking up a 16-year-old girl. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with him? You see, that was normal seeing that. Yeah, yeah, then. absolutely. Back then, it but was as you get normal. older, as you get older, you're thinking in your head, yo, you know, that's my competition. And you know what? Actually, that also motivated to go to work at a young age. Because all I kept on seeing was, okay, if I need to get a car, I need to get money, I guess I'm going to get a job. Right. And literally, 14 was my first job. And 15, and then I always kept on working because I always had the mentality that if this is what it is to get into a relationship, then and this is what I need to do. So let's mm-hmm. let's jump into the relation as the relationship aspect of it, folks, because we know how culture can affect us, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely, there's no doubt about that. But let's talk about how it can it can affect a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend if they come from that type of environment, and now they're supposed to be vulnerable with their spouse, a sexual relationship, and for whatever reason, maybe they're not meshing. You know, why, why, do you, why do we think that culture can affect that? And well, go ahead. Go ahead, um, Jazz. Well, it can. I mean, let's be real. We, we grew up regardless where we came from. I think it's pretty safe to say that a lot of us grew up where communication wasn't really a big thing. And right. like anything, sex is something that you need to really communicate about. Even when you first start dating with somebody, you start to have conversations because you guys are learning each other and each other's bodies. It will affect greatly a relationship if so if you're not meshing because if if one person doesn't know how to open up and feel comfortable, then how are you supposed to progress in your relationship or in your sexual relationship? So again, we talked about this earlier. Hey, C, we talked about this earlier. How you just okay at the end of the day if you don't. If you're not able to sit down with your partner and talk to them, we spoke about that. You're not going to be able to resolve this. Like, sex is just not about the act. There's a lot of things that go into it, right? And the more time you spend in a relationship, the more time you got to figure out more creative ways and different things to do to keep it popping, right? But if you don't communicate and are able to talk about that, how the hell are you supposed to do that? No, it's true. And if you've been taught that sex is a bad thing, right, you might be uncomfortable to do some extra things. (laughs) Some, you know, some things that you guys see on Pornhub, that type of shit. Yes, because in your mind, that's dirty because that's how you were raised. But in reality, you know what I'm saying? Like, in reality, it's just two people doing what they do. You, you know? may think about my first job when I was um young. I was 14 years old. And I was in a mail room, right? I worked in a mail room, and I had a supervisor. Moriqua, he's mad cool people. He's in his early 30s. He's like, yo, you dating? I'm like, I'm still learning. I have a, I have a girlfriend. I'm just learning the basics. Keep practicing. Don't worry about it, because in life, you learn from, learn from your mistakes. Don't try to show off and impress her. She, you know, that one person is not going to teach you everything. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, one day, papi. You got to get an older woman to teach you. And I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah, yeah, they'll teach you tricks. They'll teach you this. And I'm like, that's what you need in life. You need to learn. Well, how are you going to find the right one if you can't practice? Are you going to give her, you know, are you going to grow together? And I'm thinking in my head, yo, I thought you were going to grow together. I thought you practiced together. <clears throat> but then as I got older, I'm like, wait a minute. In movies, they show off all these stupid things about, oh, yeah, I love you, I love you. Let's wait till we get married. But then I asked this question. What happens if your chemistry is off? It's great. It's great. Let's say you and this person have a great chemistry. And then the night comes. And then you guys are on a totally different level of uncomfort zone. Oh, and no. I, I, I definitely ride the car before I drive it out the lot, folks. And that's just <laughs> so me. So I preach that. I preach this to everyone. So I, a couple of years ago, I, I asked some, some college students. I was, an, I was an ambassador for a community college I used to go to. And we used to talk like mentoring them. And a lot of them were talking about that relationship and sex. And I tell people all the time now, this generation, yo, get to know yourself, get to know your body, get to know what you like in life. Mm. The old me, 20 years ago, my version would tell myself, no, you're going to find Cinderella, you're going to find that special someone, and you're going to learn all this nasty stuff with her. 
And then you get older, you're like, yo, if I would have stuck with my first or the first person I ever with, I'm like, wow, that's whack. Because I've seen people break relationships because of sex. Yeah. Like people have broken in relationships. I've seen it and I've heard from it and Wait, they come so back to me. Just, just give me one example. Don't say no names. We can keep it anonymous here. I promise nah, talk to our folks. No, but no. <laughs> I want to know, what is one issue? I, I, I want to know, it better not be the head. It better not be head. That, that is a common issue, by the way. That is a common issue between men and women that I see a lot. Like men don't, give, don't, don't want, men don't want to give a woman a oral, and in return, the woman don't want to give it to her. So it's like, if you don't do it to me first, you're not going to get it. And as a man and a woman, I'm thinking in my head, ain't you both curious to see how it feels? Ain't you both mm -hmm. curious? And if you're telling me after three or four months after a relationship, you're still fighting with each other over it, then what's going to happen one day? You know, when you're watching Pornhub or when you know someone else, Let's say as, as a woman, if, you, if your man who loves you, who does everything perfect for you, does not want to do that to you for whatever pride he has. And then so all of a sudden, some other guy, an ex or somebody may go up to you and say, well, you know, me, back in the days, I did it to you. And that's yeah. where the whole confusion starts. So I also think it has to do with, and Cookie in the comments says, take your time to learn yourself. First, value yourself and your body because it's a temple. Facts. Because guess what? I think going back to what you're saying, LJ, is important. You have to know what you like for yep. you to have, for you to expect the other person to know what you like. Like, you got to know what you like first. You can't expect, mm -hmm. I can't expect my husband to know what I like. I got to tell him and teach him. Yes. Are you comfortable and, teaching them? There's some people and, that are not comfortable teaching. And guy, well, it's, Good point. okay, but that's, that's why you have to, that's why we have to explain to people that it is okay to say, yo, I don't like something you're doing or I want you to do this. Yep. Would you get like, offended if someone tells you that after so many years later? No. 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 Now, ask yourself. Now ask yourself what a person, the other opposite sex will get offended if you tell them, yo, you're kind of doing it wrong. See, it's a little bit different. Maybe in my 20s when I, I, I'm not at the level that I am right now, I probably would have got offended. But me being being now where I'm at and in the relationship I am with my husband, no, because we've been able to break that wall and have that conversation or conversations about sex, what we like, what we don't like, what we want to try. Like to us, it's actually fun, like trying different things and figuring out if this works, this doesn't work. And we even joke about it sometimes if it's a fail, but you have to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? I agree. And, and I also feel like, like Jasmine said, not everybody is at that point in their relationship. Because I'll be honest, going in, I got married at 22. At 22, I didn't know what the hell I liked, you know? So it was, it was my husband trying a million things, doing a million things to be like, yo, do you like this? Do you like that? Do you like that? And I was just like, ah, you know, because I myself, I had to take time to really figure out what it is that I liked so that I can communicate that to my husband. I think early on, that's what girls... We struggle with that because you know what it does? If we're not good at something in the bed, we automatically internalize that. And oh, I think he's going to leave us and yep. cheat on us. Yep. Facts. Because well, guys like, the same way too. We're, we're, taught, we're taught that we're supposed to please. It goes all back. Okay, so listen, listen our thought process, LJ. It goes all back to the way that we were brought up, which is, we are taught to please and take care of and nurture and do everything for everybody. So why wouldn't it be the same in a relationship with your spouse or your partner or whatever? Our job is to just please them. Our job is, is, is to make sure they're taken care of. So nobody has a conversation with you about, hey, no, you should speak up. No, you should say, I feel good this way. I don't feel good that way because nobody tells you that. Nobody tells you that at all. We have to start talking to each other to be like, hey, girl, you're, I feel just like you. Hey, girl, is, I'm still having this, that same this problem. Is, this is recent, guys. Like, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. We grow in as women. We, we come. This is what I'm saying. A relationship is ever growing, ever learning, okay? Because what my husband likes right now, he may not like six years from now. So mm -hmm. now we have to adapt. We have to come together. We got to be like, hey, maybe when he's 80, it's not getting to that level no more. So we may need you to hit do a something point strange. Right now, you hit something very important that um, earlier in my podcast, I spoke to a sex expert. He's Ooh. a really great person. 
And she said a point that I never, I really never thought about. The person, the freak that you were back when you were 18, ain't the freak you were when you're 28 and you're 30. And it's, first of all, and if it's still the same person you were back then, that could be a problem. Mm. Because sometimes, you know, people adapt to new things. Thanks to the internet, we see more and more stuff. So the things you used to do when you're young, they used to say, ew, I'll never do that. You're like 28, well, I got to do that now. Or now you're like, well, this is part of who I am now. So I think no matter what, as you get mature and you evolve, you have to keep on evolving. Yeah. So if you were your partner for 20 years and your partner hasn't evolved after so many years, then that's where I think people forget the mixed communication that comes out. If, you're, if, if your partner hasn't evolved in a very long time, he or she is getting it from somewhere else. There's no doubt about it. You cannot convince me different. I don't want to hear it. Well, you know, my well, grandfather, wait, go ahead. If, if they're evolving too much and you're not part of that evolution, either, process, and they, either they or. They a whole new trick, they definitely getting it from somewhere else. Because <laughs> how you learn that, how you do that, we didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and supposedly was, so yeah. supposedly somebody our mama said that if you put them in the bath and 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 the scrotum floats or you no know, you gotta fill up the no you're saying it wrong you gotta fill up the bath okay so if you if you want to know if your man cheap what is it you fill up the bath and they sit down and oh it, that theory man the, the scrotum floats what they cheating yeah be, because so. <laughs> yeah if the <laughs> I don't even know because I'm trying to think. Uh -uh. I think if it's the scrotum, if if it floats, they're cheating <laughs> because it's empty. Because it's empty. That's that's the logic. Oh, um, I, I had female friends that used to tell me. Well, actually, their boyfriend used to tell me, "Yo, my girlfriend when I got home, she told me right when we went to the shower, she she smelled my pants. She used to smell my pants. She used to look at me." to go down there and make sure there's no pre cum and none of that stuff. Oh, no. I'm not doing no, that. that. I'm not nasty. doing that. No. And yeah. you know what? And, you, and the reason why he did this, I'm going to tell you why. So my, my late grandfather, when he, before he passed away, he used to be like, yo, if you ain't pleasing your woman, someone else is. He was that blunt. He was that blunt guy. He was like, yo, you know what? Oh, yeah, I like yeah? your grandfather you know, already. You know, like, Mind you, he had different wives left and right. Oh, so, no. So you can yeah. take that back. <laughs> so his mentality was this. His mentality was this. He's like, yo, if you have a woman, that loves you for who you are and accepts you for who you are now, you better do it good and bad because if not, one day when that's so whack and she's so used to it, somebody else is going to catch her attention. So whatever craziness shit that you don't do now with her, always remember, someone out there is better. He was promoting someone it in a freak. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I was a teenager. I was a teenager when he was telling me that shit. I'm like, yo, grandfather, you're supposed to be teaching me this shit. This <laughs> no, life lesson. Just think about lesson. it. And, and guys, do you think that this is super inappropriate? But let me think about that, right? It's okay. Seriously, um, Cookie Cookie is validating this comment, guys. Fill, in the, fill the tub. If it floats, he's cheating because it's empty, no sperm. I, I, I'm, I don't have no words for that shit. But think about it. <laughs> Going... This shit is crazy. Going back to what you were saying, right? You had that relationship with your grandfather. Think about how liberating it would be for females, but it's a double standard here if a mother had that conversation with her daughter. Ooh. Now, I'm a mother, and, and, I, and, and I will tell you that I can't even say that I could do that. And I'm pretty open about the topic, as you guys can see. But I don't think I would be able to do that with my daughter because you want to try to preserve their is innocence. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Like, like I tried my best to look at it. Go ahead. No, go, no. I just, I don't think that I could do that with my daughter unless maybe she was an adult and she came right. to me for some advice. I don't think I would be promoting, like, telling her right off the bat at when she's a teenager um, that you need to make sure you get your freak on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a little too have, much. Let me ask you something. But is it, doesn't it feel good, though? Isn't that the best feeling in the whole damn world when you have sex? Isn't it? Wow. The best feeling? If it's and you're good. telling me that we're, we're, we're hiding that from people. We're saying the best feeling you're ever going to have when, when you connect with someone else you cannot do it because it's that feels that good and it may brainwash you because that's the way I feel like they're interpreting it because it feels okay. that good. We're telling people not no. to do it. The same way, you know, but, I mean, but think, about weed, think about what we Remember that sex is not just, um, it's physical. not just the act. It's not just the physical for, yeah. for a female. 
And and me and Jasmine, this was the first conversation that me and Jasmine had that we we could agree. Sex isn't just about the physical, it is so much about the about the the metaphysical. And yep. And it's the feelings, it's the emotions. So when a guy is able to get it off and keep it moving, a girl is still connected. Yep. A girl is still connected. So it's it's very hard for you to see or would want to see your daughter go through something like that. I'm not saying a that every man will do that. But... Especially an inexperienced girl. I mean, later down the line, as you grow mature as a woman, you are more able and capable of kind of separating if that's what you want to do, just have casual sex. But a young girl, and even boys, um, you're not mature enough to separate the two. You automatically, yeah. you automatically tie that feeling, that sensation, that, that, you know, you tie that that emotion, yeah, that emotion to love. You tie that that. Experience. But as you get older, remember we my my whole podcast that we did together, separate the feelings from the fucking. Yes, that's you can. a common thing now in, in this generation. Now this new environment became more. It's more common now of eliminating that uh, stigma of love because let, let's just be like, let's, I think back in the 90s, back in the early 90s, you know, you want to fall in love. You want to be in love with somebody. And then you want to go with the, you know, having sex with them and then love each other. And then when you're broken hearted after that, your first love breaks your heart or, you know, break, bad relationship, you don't think about going out there sometimes and be like, damn, I'll start all over again. I'm going to end up sleeping with someone all over again. You emotionally depressed in a way. Yeah, absolutely. And then, but then you realize that oh shit, this next person doesn't can make me feel the same way as that first person did. But since I maybe have more experience, you never know. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I and I'm gonna say I disagree because when I was in a, a long relationship with a guy, and I, when I was heartbroken, and we and we had been intimate, and I was heartbroken, I never thought, yo, I'm gonna find somebody just as good, or I'm gonna be that way. I kind of felt yep. like that's that the was end all be all. Yeah. That was it. I felt the same way. I was like, I was never going to be Yo, loved the same so way. Yo, it's so emotional. You got to build that shit. I'm That's... never going to have sex with nobody again, ever yes. again, because it's, it's never going to feel the same. And I, I'm not saying every woman, but a majority of women, we're emotional creatures. And it's hard to, to disconnect uh, yeah. because we tie everything with the beautiful bow of emotions. <laughs> and feeling. You think um, more emotion is, is happening now, or is less emotion being involved with the new era, with the new, with the new modern society when it comes to sex? I think that there's. I feel like our, the... our 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 age, our development was that love, marriage, then sex mentality. Now it's try it before you drive it, before you purchase it, right? Try that car, baby. Or it could just be that people are more open minded, and are having more conversations about certain things that we weren't allowed to that they're getting started at an earlier age to have those conversations that we're now learning in our age group to have with each other and sex is more sex is more easily accessible than it was when we were kids let's be real there was no instagram instagram is is i'm not hating on instagram guys but it is soft porn <laughs> Don't be talking oh, too yeah. loud. They're gonna you mean Cinemax? You mean, you mean, look, when I grew up in the back in the days, the only way you watched Cinemax. back in the days was kind of 62 and 63 on illegal cables back in the day. And if you press the buttons back and, yeah, and if you press the buttons back and forth, back and forth real quick, you get that five seconds clip. And then when you got older and older, you got the Cinemax, the HBO. What was the show, the, that show called? Real Sex? Back in the days? Oh, I remember that show. Don't ask no, me why. That was, that was error, our era. Now with everything going on now, people could just Google it. Matter of fact, put, put it this way. A junior high school kid could be in school right now on his cell phone, his iPhone, and he could watch anything he wants. Anything his mind explodes. And sometimes that's too much for them to Shout out to all the men. She's like, no, no, no. Shout out to all the men in the comments who was watching HBO. Yeah, um, they real just sex. <laughs> God damn, there was a lot of us watching that shit. Um, so, yeah. yeah, so just, 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 give you the, just give you the whole thing with that. I think now, as we, I mean, as we are older, we're able to inhale and inherit all that and take it all in differently. Mm -hmm. Think of like us now. Imagine twenty years ago, us with this kind of technology. How would our brains react? What will we see differently compared to now? Because I can just go through anything right now. Let's say I'm poor or whatever, and I'd be like, okay, whatever it is, what it is. Okay, eighteen years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years, I'd be like, what the hell is this? Click that button. Click that button. What the hell is that? 
Honestly, I think that if I had the access to what they have access to, I think I would be freaked the fuck out. And the reason why is because it's, it's like so much access to like porn and unrealistic positions and oh. scenarios. I yeah, thought you was going to be like, like you was going to be the next Cardi B, girl. No, I was like, no, I would be stressed out in the sense, like, 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 am I supposed to live up to those expectations? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lot of pressure but for guys for too. Girl. But for guys, too, because I see some six, seven dude that looks like freaking Aquaman <laughs> making, making, making his scene up in that joint. I'm like... <laughs> A shout out to the people that I know here, Sharon. There's a bunch of people from my from my IGs here. Thank you for you know being part of it. Woo! But let's be real when it comes to a lot of this stuff, you know. Um, I think more more than ever, it's about accepting what it is. Like you know, it evolved. Luckily, that we're mature enough, I think, and we're still learning. I think I love learning. But there be some crazy shit out there that I feel like it could confuse somebody when it comes to the, the way culture is nowadays. So, like, I feel like I, I'm, I'm gonna have my son's gonna go to junior high school real soon. So we're gonna have more of a talk. I hope he ain't but, going to them hooky parties. <laughs> I don't even think they exist. You know what? I, I mean, yeah, I'll be right they now, now because you a dad, they don't exist. But they <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know because they back then it was to tough to have a hooky yo. party. They're definitely more sophisticated. They probably got an Instagram fucking group. They all they all log into the group and then they meet. I'm telling so you. So let exactly. So let me ask you how like how hooky parties were back in the nineties for me. We used to pass a little letter, little people paper little letter saying, Yo, uh, text you on your beeper, the phone number, and the person would tell you your address on the beeper. The beeper. How to get there. I'm a beeper. I'm sorry, you know. Back in the days, we had codes. So hooky parties for us was 112. We put 112 in our beeper. Be like, yo, yo, we got a party, you know. We got, no. you know, that's our. Hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that, hold that. You're not getting, you're not getting past that. 112. <laughs> was this yeah, because you know, fucking peaches and creams? Peaches no, and we went way creams. before peaches and creams. Only you, stupid. You know, oh, we're going back cool. before that, baby. Come on. It, it, it's a it's a it's a different world. I, I think now that I'm getting older and like I said, I can't wait to have the conversation with my kid. Right. About first thing I'm gonna teach him honestly is no, the no 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 world. Yeah. Like no yeah. no no. That's important. And understand that it's okay. And like I always preach to everyone, it's okay. You don't have to be advanced compared to others because that's another thing too. Depends on your group that you're in. You could be in a group of people that could peer pressure you as well and push you yeah. to do things. So, you know, if you, let's say you're in a group of friends and you're like the only one that's still a virgin or never done nothing, you kind of put yourself in a peer pressure position and be like, damn, do I really got to be the only one in the group that can't do nothing? Yeah. Because growing up for me, I, when it goes to clubbing, I was a horrible dancer. I couldn't dance salsa for nothing growing up. So when it came to all my friends dancing, I'm like, damn, we're going to play, we're going to dance to a Spanish club. I was hooked, I mean, Teen Bash when you're oh! young. Like, I remember Teen you know, Clubs. Mm -hmm. So but I, have a, I have a question for you. When it comes to peer pressure, from a guy's perspective, mm -hmm. what do you think is the most? What did you experience the most peer pressure from, especially like when you were a teenager, um, coming up? Because I know for us, we feel our as women and girls, we have we get a lot of peer pressure. No, stop doing that. <laughs> he keeps disappearing. <laughs> oh, oh, I see him disappearing. <laughs> God, oh Lord, we're gonna lose out there, guys. But... Oh, IG, IG, IG's card blocking, IG's card blocking. Yo, no, but... but we definitely pin this room as Santos Thread Shop says it's room t room 112 where the players dwell. So that is now the new, <laughs> that is now, I don't, I don't pin that because that is now the title of this room, folks. <laughs> No, but tell us, what is it that you, what did you experience more as a guy? We want to hear a guy's perspective, like when it came to sex and being a teenager and young. Oh, my God. When your group of friends from playing street football, all of a sudden your friends, little by little, saying, yo, I just lost my virginity. That's the best feeling in the damn world. That shit was hot. And you know what, guys? Instead of playing sports with you guys or playing some PlayStation 1 with you guys, I'm going to go have sex. I'm going to go chill with my <laughs> girlfriend. And then little by little, your groupie is changing from... 10 people to 8 people to 6 people and then your friends don't really want to hang out with you no more. They're like, um... They're getting that ass. Yeah. And they don't come back to you until later on, you know? 
But then the thing is that eventually, if you're the last one to do something, yeah, that's they're pressure. Gonna, there's an assumption because let's say they're single again. You know, they used to promote that back then. You know, I'm not a virgin no more, but you know, and I have skills, and and you'd be like, wow, that plays another role. And then so, when you hold on, do, hold on. Let me let me elaborate on that. So you guys used to talk about like skills. What skills? Please. Uh, what? Yes, please, please elaborate because all the females in the comments, the guys in the comments, I want you, I want us to be clear here when we're talking at Mama's Cocktail Hour. If if you haven't subscribed, you guys need to subscribe. LJ, put your put your info out there so they they could subscribe to your channel as well as um your IG. Oh no, uh, I think we we lose an LJ guys. <laughs> That's what it was. What, what skills? Because if I recall my first experience as a teenager, looking back now, it was horrible. He had Ain't no, no skills. skills. They're just like a thrust. No, 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 no. The skill. <laughs> a, a thrust. Don't, not even. Don't be a minute man. Don't be a minute. Don't be that Missy Elliott song. First of all, if it's your first time having sex, you're gonna be a minute man. Come on now. And it, you know what? It's, it's not gonna be no thrust. It's gonna be a poke. Baby, poke. Baby. Poke. That's it. Or it's gonna fire. You know what? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think this person put a comment that's funny. Uh, he was right though. Tuggerific. Yeah. Oh. The, the no. move. That's what, he, what he said? <laughs> Niggas is not just giving a shorty the finger. Yeah. <laughs> wait, Yo! wait. When I think about that, I think about American Pie. American yeah. Pie, the fourth movie. No, but that's so true. That's so true because there's the hype. There's the hype. There's the hype. You guys are so excited, and then there's nothing for us. You just sit in there, nothing. Like, not like this, like this, like. Is this the way it's supposed to feel? <laughs> is this what my mother was going to beat my ass for? So no, it wasn't the most amazing <laughs> feeling in the world for me. I was like, oh, hell no. I'm about to get my ass beat for this? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I got you. We're back. Okay. Yo, someone doesn't like me up in IG. What's going on? <laughs> Yo, you know what the crazy thing is, LJ, is that we can hear you, but your your photo is a still. Oh, yeah? It's still still? Jazz, do you see it moving on your end? He's moving now. He wasn't moving before. I still don't see it moving on my end. But anyways, if we got action, <laughs> we got action. <laughs> I mean, let me ask you, as, as when you're a teenager, when you're young, do girls talk about this stuff? How do you know from your group if someone's doing it or they're very discreet about it? Oh, they're going to talk about it they and glorify talk about it. it. Because my guy friends, they will disappear little by little. They'll disappear. They're just little by little. We're turning to like, yo, you want to play PlayStation tonight? Some, some Grand Theft Auto too? Nah, I, I, I'm going to go to this $5 movie theater up in Bushwick right there, you know, and then I'll go to her house for, you know, some fun. That was it. So I think that going back to our topic, guys, if everybody who's joining, who's, who's still staying on, the topic is how culture can affect your relationship. Um, mm -hmm. The way, the way the way your family or your traditions are, how what you saw around you, what you saw around you, how that can affect your sex life with your spouse, with your partner, because, you know, some women get demonized when, <laughs> when it comes to us having sex or doing certain things. And um, I don't think we find our sexuality until later in life. Definitely. So, when, when you I, get out of your comfort zone. Right. Yes. And when you start to build confidence, that's why it's important that with, with, um, with our young girls that we try to instill confidence first. We're not saying that the act of sex isn't, isn't healthy and it isn't good. Right. It absolutely is. But well, you know it's what's not fair? They, they have a cheat sheet. They have a cheat sheet now because they can YouTube shit nowadays and right. they can learn more compared yeah. to us. I, you want to learn something? You go to a library, to an encyclopedia. Well, no, it doesn't teach you everything because it doesn't teach you first how to respect yourself. It doesn't teach you how to have confidence. It doesn't it teach you how to be confident when you don't feel comfortable and say no. And that's why, like, I know for my daughter, when she gets older, I'm not going to have a conversation with her about how freeing sex is. Um mm -hmm. I'm going to have more of a discussion with her on how she needs to, yes, you know, you're going to go out there and do you, but you need to respect yourself because that's a lot of a pressure. That's a lot of emotion. That's a lot of responsibility. I agree. I agree. And when I you start God, YouTubing God. shit, when you start YouTubing. <laughs> that's all information that they can't take in. You know, like great. I said, Mama's, Mama's cocktail hour will do 
uh, sex one on one for the for the new era of of different people's perspectives, first times. Maybe people could relate to it because that's what I thought about when it came to the new era. They could listen to a bunch of podcasts right now to so listen to people's first time experience and get more. I'm, you know, I mean, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, our audience ranges from the age of thirteen to sixty five, guys. So there's thirteen year olds probably watching this, and my son is four. But you shouldn't so be scary. watching it. And right, this 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 is for eighteen <laughs> and over, guys. You should not be watching this. Although I'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to know how to put things away, but you should not be watching this. Um, because I think it's important that you... What? Safe sex sex is another thing that we need to very, very, like, like, it's a very important thing that I really don't think when we're young, we we promote it well, the importance of safe sex. What I mean by safe sex is, they tell you about the condom thing, right? You know, put a condom on. But you also about the hygiene part, you know. uh, When you got older, you realize that, hey, you know, you could get UCIs and stuff like that. That, you know, certain people are allergic to lubricants. Yeah. So they don't teach you that shit in life. And so you go through some bad experience or you go through or you see things differently. So I'm thinking, you know, I hope the modern era can advance all that. Skip the bullshit. Keep it real. You know, mm-hmm. condom is one thing, but let's be real about everything else. I get you know, it. Sex education in the pool. So LJ, thank you so much for joining us today <laughs> and coming in and talking all things sex. Do you have any questions for us? before you head out we want to see if anybody else would like to jump in and add some comments to this and give their perspective maybe a female maybe another male um but i definitely want to hear some experiences today so lj do i want you to drop your info tell people where they can find you and then also if you have any questions for us here at mamas well first things first thank you so much for having me on a saturday night yes Um, it was fun yeah i'm very blunt i'm very honest I think everything we share is very informative. One thing I definitely want to share is I need your point of view of all this. I need to know, well, give me your set of how women react to when they're young and what this whole sex thing is. It nervous thing? Is it peer pressure? What is it that comes to their mind? Because that's something that I never really asked when I was young. I never asked them, hey, what's your point of view when I'm doing all this? Are you nervous? Are you getting scared? Like, what's your mindset? I definitely think as women, we, we are still getting comfortable with self. We are still trying to learn our bodies at that moment. Our boobs are developing. We all of a sudden have an ass. There's hips involved. There's hormones. There's periods. There's cramps. There's a whole bunch of shit that we're going through internally that we don't understand. So naturally, we see stuff on Pornhub or Instagram, and we naturally think, or well, now I'm saying, but back then, if we saw it on TV or we saw Aaliyah, we thought we had to look like that to be desirable. So you want to know what we were dealing with? We were dealing with massive body shaming because there was a time where I, I remember like the fat ass thing only came up, only came up when I was like 11, 12, because when I was younger, I used to get made fun of for having a big butt. Yeah. Really? So yeah, it wasn't until I started getting into like my seventh, eighth grade mm-hmm. year that I was moving it over to high school that they were like, oh, it was a desirable thing. So at first I thought my butt was something I needed to hide. So I would wear long t-shirts. My hips were wide. So, yep. you know, I think like as women, we deal with a whole bunch of insecurities. And that's why we talk about them here. And I don't even think they're done. We still deal with insecurities now. Oh, you know, we wish we were skinny enough. We wish we had bigger boobs. We wish our yeah. hair looked like this. It's constant because guess All what? The they put these images of people out there that you think that you should look like that. My daughter that thinks, a big thing. Yeah. So that is still currently a big thing. And think about it. It's even worse now because everything is shoved down your face. Yep. That, that was something I also I, was, I want to mention earlier about it. They used to tell me, oh, very gordito. So you know what? If you don't lose weight, you ain't going to get no pretty girls up there. I'm yeah. like, damn. Yeah. That, was, that was a thing back in the day my grandpa used to be like. Yo, can I tell, can I, can I make a comment here? Because I was a big girl. I was a big girl. I was almost 250 pounds i struggled with weight my whole life i was up and down and i played sports in high school and that's where i was able to keep it but i ended up getting weight loss surgery and i did that for me not for anybody else so i now that i look back at everything it's all about it's all about confidence because let me tell you something confidence can go a long way i don't think at a as as a female i ever looked at a male's size to determine whether or not I wanted to be with him. It was yep. more so his heart, 
his confidence, the way he made me laugh, take swag, take swag the way he could dress, you know, like mm -hmm. all those matters, the way he made you feel, that was more yeah. important to me. So for me, for anybody who's watching this, whoever had a problem with weight, I've been there, girl, I've been there, so I understand. It's all about confidence. Start to feel comfortable with you, love and yep. accept you, and you'll see that other people are going to start to fall in fucking line. And if those people don't fall in line, then you can tell them to kick fucking rocks. And Sorry. also, too, when you build your confidence, then you don't settle. A lot of the times, I know when you're younger, you settle for what you think you can get, whatever you can get, how you can get it. Because you're so preoccupied with everything you see wrong with yourself. So when the first person comes along, if you're not strong within yourself, you take it because why not? How do I know someone else is not going to come after? Yeah. So that's I why it's important that we build confidence from the very beginning with girls. Yeah. Very important. Girl, with thank our, you with so you much for being part of this. I, I'm really happy for it. I do have one more request. Yes. One more. I love it when I leave anybody's show. I, I love when they say live it, love it, fuck it. Because you know what? If you want to catch me, people... My 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 screen name is LJ Rivera, but my model is Live It, Love It, Fuck It. You know, fuck Our, it, do whatever you want to do. So can you just say it and I'll leave right now? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Ready, Jazz? One, yes. two, three. Live it, Live love it, it, love it, fuck, fuck it. it. Oh, <laughs> I thank you so much. Now, All right, bye. Kick me out if you want. Bye. Kick me out. Thanks. Bye. Mad love. Mad love. Thanks for coming on. All right, let me see. There we go. Um, yeah, folks, shout out to LJ for coming on. That was dope. Giving us perspective. Jasmine, you was about to take his head off, girl. What? <laughs> Why you was getting mad at our man? LJ? You was like, no, I don't agree with no. that. No, I just, because I feel like, no, I, it, sex is so much more. Like, yeah, I want my, my daughter and women to feel comfortable with exploring sex, but you got to start in levels you know it's it's a really it feels good hell yeah it feels good if it's done right because let's be honest some people be out there thinking they haven't bomb ass sex and it's not it's whack, whack. <laughs> but it's a big responsibility and you got to be ready for that you got to be ready for that <laughs> yeah i you know lj to be serious i think we need to do a um a podcast with you on it your perspective is amazing we haven't even scratched the surface with the things that we could talk about and kind of go back and forth with so thank you for coming on we're gonna definitely do something official yeah. where we can do a longer episode but we definitely wanted to grab some other people's perspectives um we're also going to be starting a new thing where we bring people on so they can talk about their business as you see yes. LJ was talking about his podcast. So we want to bring entrepreneurs on, people who have podcasts, people who are doing their thing, just to kind of network, build a relationship, yes. and also kind of get to know you guys and what you're doing and promote your product. Because yes. if you don't believe in your product and you don't believe what, in what you're doing, nobody else is going to believe in it too. So if you have a business and you're starting out a business, and I know I started my LLC in October of 2020, 2020, 2020, and I understand how you may not feel like, oh, this is just my little thing that I'm doing. Oh, it's not that important. It is very important. That's right. What you're doing, your passion is very important. So why not come on with the mamas and yes. promote your product and promote what yes. you're doing? And we don't care what it is. We don't care if you're a fellow podcaster. We don't care if you're selling art and painting. We don't care if you wrote a book like some people in the comments. We don't care if you're selling clothing. We don't care if you're selling, uh, doing cakes. We, we want you to come on. It's your passion. It's what you do. And we want to give you the platform to talk about it and show it to others. Santos, that is absolutely a open invitation. So if you do want to come on to Mama's Cocktail Hour, you can either come on now with the open floor or you can come on next Friday and Saturday when we go live. So... Hey, we open, folks. <laughs> we open. We definitely want to network. We know there's power in networking. So come on over if you're, um, if you're brave enough. You know what I found interesting um, yeah. from hearing with his perspective? How nervous a, a boy that age also 
was. Because I always saw the boys as like, like taking control, taking control. Like they already knew about it, even if they weren't good at it, they just knew about it. You know. I mean, I definitely had different experiences with that. I've had guys who I felt like I was more experienced than. I can't lie. Where I felt like I was like, no, stupid, you guys do this. <laughs> You know, so again, <laughs> guys, and that could just me, me and my aggressive nature trying to tell somebody what to do. I'm sorry, but I definitely experienced both sides of the spectrum. I've had men who are like, oh, no, I take control. I know what I'm doing here. And then I've had men like, please help me. <laughs> I'm they dead. You know? they, like just the look on their face was like, yo, total guidance is needed ahead. And, but, you know. Yo. Shout out to guys though, because that's a lot of you know that's a lot of pressure. Even when you're older, and especially when you first are intimate with someone like you're feeling like you're getting into a relationship with, we assume they're gonna guide this ship. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they don't know they don't know our, our sex language, just like we don't know their sex language. But somehow they're expected to like initiate, take control finish it and make it good all at once like that's a lot of, that's a lot of pressure <laughs> no but going back to the topic really quickly guys i i, I just want to say like culturally personally i feel like because sex was something that was very taboo in my household something that my father shamed um mm -hmm. and something that i thought was me me doing the bad deed that I did struggle with in my relationship and currently my marriage, I struggled with that. So going back to what we said, women don't finally start to find themselves, I feel like, into your late 20s and 30s, depending on your situation. Yep. Because if you're not with another person, and it doesn't got to be another person, but if you haven't got your shit together and gone through some experiences, then you're not going to elevate. That's my personal experience. So I feel like I did not learn myself up until my 30s. Mm-hmm. And at that point is when I started to build confidence, even when it came to sex. I struggled with it. Um, you know, at, there was a time where I started to feel like, oh, my God, um, if I don't do this, then I'm married to him. My spouse may be, you know, go look somewhere. And don't get me wrong, guys. That's not my spouse had never, ever made me feel like that. But that's how I felt personally. Like if I wasn't good at something or I wasn't excelling at something or maybe he wanted to be more spontaneous. And there was a time that I didn't want to be more spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Because I was, still, I was still dealing with knowledge of self. So I was still trying to learn myself. I was still trying to build confidence. Like I shared with you guys earlier, I struggled with weight. So I had to, I had to feel sexy first. And let me yeah. tell you something. Weight does not make you feel sexy. I'm saying even if you lose it. So I think a lot of people think confidence has to do with like you losing weight or looking a particular way. Like, oh, if I'm a size six, I'm going to feel more confident. I'm going to feel more. No, because even at my size now, where I'm a size, I'm a size 10. I, I still feel like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. is this Chicho point pop, popping no. out today? Is you this ass confidence? Cheek? Confidence is where you get to a point where you be like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, facts. Because when you get to that point, that means your mind is free. And when your mind is free, your inhibitions are gone. When your inhibitions are gone, game over. You're willing to do anything and anything. You're not worrying about bending over this way or turning over that way because you're worried about how you're going to look. Yeah. You kinda, you're kind of let yourself more, you let yourself go more into the act of. And you're not stuck in your head. And it makes it all that more enjoyable. And let me but tell you, you have to get to that space. I've I've been there a lot though. I've been stuck in my own head about trillions yeah. of things, guys. Something as little as like, yo, I didn't shave my legs today. What, girl? This and is your husband. Husband. And let me tell you, you get to a point where yeah, you try to keep yourself, you know. But let's be realistic. <laughs> like, it'd be a jungle. <laughs> sometimes, let you know. He has to be Tarzan. Like, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Things will never be the same. But you know what, though? When you are 
connected with your spouse and y'all feeling each other and you in that moment, he don't give up no. about your leg. He you don't, don't care. You don't care about anything in that moment but yourself. And and Santo says it takes years to develop confidence. And I agree 100%. It takes years. And that's why I have mentioned in our previous live, if, if anybody kind of jumps to the whole, um, and this is, this is a sidebar, guys, about the three-way thing. If you ask your significant other for a three-way and you guys are early on in the relationship, that person may internalize that as they're not good enough. And Damo says, in my 30s, still working on it. Facts. Facts. I'm damn near 40 and I'm still working on it. You know why? Because our inter just interpretation of what confidence is, is different. Like Zeta said, maybe in our 20s, we're thinking, okay, we have to be that size six. So if I get to that size six, then I'm going to be confident. Yep. We don't understand that, yeah, getting down to a size that you want to be is maybe a quarter of it, but you still have to put in work in other areas. Because... Stop. So, I'm sorry to um, stop you, Jazz. Santo says he wants to jump in. Santo, set me, send us, um, send us a request. I don't see the option down here, so hopefully you can, you can find the option on your end and send a request in so we can try to jump you on. But go ahead, Jazz. Um, but, yeah, it comes in different it, – it's different steps for confidence, you know? Conf that's why it takes so long. It, it's a process, and it's always ever, ever going. It's always – you're always going through it because you learn different ways. Yeah. And one of the best things I feel like to develop confidence, guys, is find your purpose. We spoke about that on That's Dope. If you guys haven't checked out That's Dope, check it out. It's on my page. We, yep. I, sp I spoke about that my biggest glow up was finding Mama's Cocktail Hour and really living out my purpose. And that is what gave me confidence. It wasn't no damn... Skinny jeans. It wasn't me losing 30 pounds. <laughs> it wasn't some fucking um, Instagram leggings that look like a thong with the ass coming out. Yo, I, you saw that? <laughs> I ain't hating on that, though. That just look hot. So if Yo. someone wants to send me a free pair, I will sure model that. You know what I saw, too? Sidebar. You know how when girls wear leggings that they have the little, where they, sometimes it shows their private, like, the outline? You know that they sell a slip on that if your stuff doesn't, it's not prominent enough, it makes it stick out so that you can, what do they call that when the girl's stuff shows in her tights? Oh, it's called your, um, guys, help me out here. Well, they have something that you can put in your tights that it'll show. God, your... guys, tell me what it's called. It's called something when you can see your vagina outline. I never understood that. That's another way of body shaming women. That is so freaking ridiculous. What was it called? It was called... Your vi... Camel toe. Thank you. Camel toe. <laughs> yes. Let thank you. <laughs> That's why we have... Body. This is why we have the best fans in the world because you guys be... Oh. Y'all all get gold stars. Every single one of you. <laughs> well, they sell something now. For the camel toe? Put, put, no, not to hide it. To it. So, to, so that you can have it. Open? No, like a slip. So it's like the, it's the camel. Okay. It's the camel toe, right? And you put it in your tights. So that it could be more prominent. So like maybe you don't have a camel natural camel toe on your own. So you put oh, this on and you give yourself so, a camel toe. So it's making you have like a fat pussy? Yes. And you know who showed me that? My mother. Oh no, no, no. That's that's she that's was, crossing was, lines. No, she was scrolling Facebook and she was like, What the <laughs> and she was like, Look, and it comes in different sizes. <laughs> And girls look, are really going to utilize this shit? Look, look. Zemo says the same thing. I saw it. I saw it. Fake camel toe. See? Told you. All right, guys. I'm willing to do a reel and put one on. But my shit better get 5 to 10K. <laughs> <laughs> Views. Because I ain't doing that shit. You're going to get banned from Instagram. <laughs> Instagram going to shut my ass down. No bueno, 10 hands. Okay, guys. But yeah, no, that's. That's crazy. Jasmine, do you feel like you experienced any of that? Any of what? 
any of the the shaming of sex. Body shaming or shaming no. of sex? No. Okay. I'm I shaming of sex in a sense in which way? Like in my family? Yeah, in your household. Yeah, is he yeah, I, I grew up with the same sense as you. Like I struggled a lot when I was younger between being the good girl. Okay. Because I grew up with my grandmother and my grandmother watched a hell of a lot of novelas. And anybody who watches novelas know that it's all about the good, pure girl. Yeah. Okay? That's so true. Who is then, you know, uh, scooped up by the rich man. And it don't matter if he has mad issues, if whatever. But the girl is always pure. She's always sweet. She's always loved by everybody. She's always a Catholic school girl. Always. Like, she's that, that perfection, that thing, right? So I grew up with that in my head. And then what I was being told, you got to be a good girl. Guys don't like girls that are fast. Guys, you know, they're not going to take you seriously. You want a guy to take you seriously. You don't want a guy just to play around with you. And I think because my mom had me at 15, she also instilled that in my head because she didn't want me to go down that same road. Right, naturally. At the, at the same time, though, I'm struggling with, but I like this person. So I want this person to like me and I'm feeling them. But if I do that, then I'm going to be this, this horrible person. I'm going to be this slut. Now we know that's not true, but that's how you think about it, right? Right. But then I'm also thinking if I give it to this boy, he's not going to look at me the same way because now I'm not pure. So my, in my head, my value was going to go down. Mm. And that's Preach. how I was programmed in the beginning. Now I look at sex totally different. Now I look at sex as an expression of my feelings of, of love, of a whole bunch of stuff. But when I was young, I grew up just like you. It was bad. Bad. Don't do it. Yeah, it's a balance. Real generate appreciate a, a real gentleman appreciate a woman like that. It's so true. Um, I think that you know a man that is a man that is willing to wait and allowing a woman to gain that confidence, build that relationship, build that trust. That's super dope. I also can be realistic and understand that there's a thousand emotions going. Um, you guys are going to first, second, third base, home, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and I can understand why it's so exciting, it's so fresh, it's so new, it's so, it's something that you want to try. Um, he well, said, let's look at when it's easy, it's easy. Now, let me tell you, when you're young, that's the slogan, right? Mm. When you're older, it's different. Because, Ooh, well, you need to elaborate. Because it's like, when you're older, you you get to decide if you're ready or not. Like, if you're feeling that person and you're comfortable and it's what you want to do, it's what you want to do. There's a lot of people that have sex the first, second, or third date and they're still together. They're not looked at less than. It's just two people who were feeling it and connected with each other. Santo, try to get off the lies and come back in. See if that helps. Also, guys, if you want to get on, we, we just found out some new intel. Your app has to be current so mm -hmm. you if your app needs an update it may stop the three way so if you can no, i know and we, <laughs> three way. so definitely see if you can maybe get off the live and come back in and see if that helps i don't know what's going on and there goes What's happening? Hold on. Let me see what we do in here. I think they dropped me off. Hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. You, can you see Jazz? All right. Hold on. Let me see what's going on here. All right. All right, let's see if we can do this now. Yeah. 
No, I think we, I think it's actually working. Hold on, love. We ringing Jasmine in here. Camera. I see you. Can you guys see me? We all, we all see you. I don't know. I don't know what happened to her. She was just on. That's so weird. Try one more time, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. Oh, now Jasmine's off. Let's see. I got a request. Santos, Jasmine, let's see. Guys, I'm sorry. Instagram is weird. I just sent a request out to two people to get in this room. Let's see if we can oh, get you guys happened? back. Yeah, bounce. Hey. How you doing? How hey, you doing? what's going on? Good, good. All right, How's we didn't going? get the, It's going good. I'm just going to try to get Jasmine back on. She got bounced oh. off? Yeah, she did. Hold on. Let's see if I can get her back. Instagram has been hating our three-way lately. How you doing? How you doing? Good, good. No, I just heard the conversation, especially with LJ, what LJ was saying about um, what he says about, like, the awkwardness. When you're a kid and you're going through those situations – you know, there's a lot, there's different pressures, right? There's different pressures that young ladies go through, that men go through. There's some that's, that's similar, right? As far as social acceptance, things like that. But then there's another part that's similar in that you have pressures of not knowing what the other side likes. Like you don't have that experience yet. So you're still right. learning how to deal with the opposite, you know, with the opposite end of the spectrum. You're like trying to right. figure out, okay, right? You're trying to say, hey, what is... So you don't know. It's all new. Like, whoever was bragging, like, he was talking about, like, some of the boys were bragging stuff. Like, what skills are you talking about? <laughs> I agree. That's what like, I mean. There is no know, skills. What skills? You're 16 <laughs> or 18. You know, skills? What? Be, listen, being able to finish what I, you know, for the past two minutes is a skill. That's a exactly. skill at that age, at that age. I'm saying at that age. And that's what we were talking about because that's why we say that for females, it's not as such a liberating experience. You heard how he was like, yo, isn't it the best? And we're like, hold on. Right, it's right. It's not going to, no. we can't feel the best in one minute. No. Mm -mm. No, you know what it I mean? takes time. It takes time. Even back then, because you're even at that time, because you're still lear learning yourself. You don't know all your, um, and I had to learn this too as I got older. As I experienced that too, you know, it wasn't until I got in serious relationships that, that, you know what I mean? Like that took off and that took a long time. We're, we're talking about like mid, late twenties, like that. I, now some people are faster bloomers than, you know. No, later absolutely. Bloomers, I agree. You so learn. What do you think, let me, let me ask you a question. So what do you think about the topic going back to the topic, Santos, that, and your name is Santos? Yeah. Okay. Right, Santos um, Threads. Yep. I'm Z. You could call me Z. Um, so my the question is, do you feel like in your experience in your household, or maybe for a girl that you was dating, that culture can affect how how comfortable you are in the bedroom? Yeah, culture. Cultures that you're talking about, like the culture of society at that at that moment in time. Yeah, yeah, whether it's your family, it's your mother, it's your father. You scared because your father may be coming for you to whip your ass, whatever. Right. It is. Well, okay, so the problem, the thing is that this is what happens, right? So society and the cultures put unrealistic expectations. I can remember, right? I can remember, like, you know, growing up and, like, your parents are telling you the kind of girl you have to be with. And, you know, you try to figure out those things. But at the, at the same time, it's not it's like the novella where you said, you know, they try to find this one. Ultimately, they wind up falling for the wrong one or they go through these experiences, they find it, okay, nah, this ain't it. This ain't right. it. Oftentimes, you got to go through it to figure it out. Um, but right. like, yeah, but society, look at where we are now, right? Everything is so out in the open. Look yeah, at all these absolutely. surgeries. We're going to get to a point where there will be more women and men too, because men are doing surgeries to get abs and fake muscles and stuff like these are the on. It's not just women. Let's let's be Yo, clear. Yo, hold on. Yo, hold on. We gotta throw some bombs there because I think you're the first man that has been on my show that yeah. has been that open and honestly. So shout out to you. Yeah, yeah. Because men, it's true. Because you know what it is, men and women. And, and I'm gonna be. I'm gonna keep it hundred with you because this is this is how I. It is. It should be like this. 
you got to be honest. You got to be real with it. Um, there's a double standard. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying, look, I'm not agreeing that every single woman should go inject their, their face and do all this stuff. Like, I, I'm not cool. I don't like that, but I don't knock the next person who does it. Whatever it is, teach his own. It's not my thing, right? But at the same time, look at the pressures they're dealing with. Men are not held to that same standard when it comes to um, aesthetically, although that's changing. It's getting, you know, they're getting up there, obviously, right? Remember what I told you about the muscles and stuff? But it's right. never like, not like a woman. A woman is held to, you know what I mean? Like a different standard. And so you're getting those pressures to do surgery. And, and men are feeling those pressures too now because you're seeing, you know, you're seeing guys get both. I mean, look at TV or, or look on, you know, Amazon or whatever, like, Women, men and women are both getting Botox at 25, 26, 27. And you're scratching your head like you shouldn't have wrinkles yet. Like, why are you getting <laughs> Botox at 25? Now, men let me ask you a question, Santos. So you said that you don't hate on people getting surgery. It's just not your thing. Would surgery be something that if your girl came to you and said she wanted that you would allow her to do? If she's saying, like, listen, this makes me feel confident. This makes me feel sexy. I want to have a BBL. Um, Brazilian butt lift. Right, right. How would you feel about how would you feel about her doing that for her own purpose? It would have to be something that would be discussed. So, um, first of all, because there's a lot of first. No, hold first. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta know. So why, why does it need to be discussed? Is it okay? Hold on, let me give you the permission. Not for permission. Not, not permission. Oh, okay. Because not permission. You can do whatever she wants. I could understand if it's your wife. Absolutely. That's something that needs to be discussed because you guys. But well, what I'm, if it I'm is? Yeah. Girl. Right. I'm talking about your girl. But OK, so what needs to be discussed specifically? I think where OK, where they're where they are in their First of all, where they are in their life financially to be able to afford it. I think a lot of people okay. don't realize. No, no, no. She's not asking for your money. All right. She's she's not asking for your money. She got her own money. She got her own bag. She don't need it, but she wants to get a Brazilian butt lift. You guys are in the relationship now two years. She lets mm -hmm. you know that this is something that she wants. What do you say? Um, I'm, me, I'm, it's not, like I said, um, also, I want to know where she's going to get it at. Because let's be real. Okay. Like, there's okay. so many. There's so many. That, to me, that's the number one concern. The okay. health. Because especially if you care about that person, if you care about that woman or man, you know, in your case, whatever you want, you care about them. So you, you want to find out they're going to be going to Medellin or something like that. No disrespect. I'm sure there's a lot of great doctors in Medellin, et cetera, Brazil, Santo Domingo, wherever. Right. But let's be real. There's a lot of botched surgeries, especially with the number of them going on with more, with the more, there's more opportunity now because there's so many more of them. People want to cash in. The numbers are through the roof. Right. So with the health concerns, that would be my number one thing to say, are you sure this is something you need? Now, that being said, I cannot stop her. If that makes her happy, I'm not going to fight her on it. You understand? Good. Okay. Whether she's my you wife or not. You heard the girls in the comments. The girls was like, what? Allow? They was ready to jump on you, Santos. No, no. <laughs> I don't operate that way. Everything, listen, everything has to be, in order for her to have a successful relationship, and I've learned this along you know, over time too, everything's got to be a joint venture. Mm. It's got to be a joint venture. Now there's some times where you have to, somebody's got to take the lead in certain situations. It doesn't always have to be me. You understand? I I Sometimes that. I can defer back to her and she can take the lead in the situation. And that doesn't take away from me. You understand? And vice right. versa. Nor would it take away from you when you may have to defer to something. Otherwise, if you guys are both like, Boss, boss, boss. I make every decision. You won't kill each other. You won't last. I agree. I agree. Sometimes you got to take the back seat on certain things. And that's something I learned as I got older. I wasn't that kind of guy to take the back seat because I had, you know, I let my pride, I had a lot of pride. I let that get in the way. How old are you and what's your, and what's your background? Where 34. Are you? You're 34. 30, so you well, might, 35. You 35. Yeah. Okay. So you about my age. I'm 34. And and what's your what's your ethnicity? I'm Puerto Rican. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I'm definitely Puerto Rican and Dominican. 
I'm about the same age and I love your perspective. I love how you're saying that, you know, it, it, it's definitely a joint venture because that's it so is. true. That's facts. Well, so well, what, well go ahead, I'm ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. no, no go I was just going to add. No, the only thing I was going to add is because you know that you can relate. You know that from the old world, right? Let's say the mother countries, it's not like that. You know that our perspective is based on our experiences and the evolution of mm. civilization. You understand? Yeah. And our age, you know, that's what that's based on. And that's what we're going to teach to our kids and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Listen, I think your perspective is super dope. You, I want to highlight you really quickly. So tell us a little bit about Santos. Tell us what it is that you got going on. Drop your Instagram so we know who you are. Go ahead, love. I appreciate that. First of all, thank you for inviting me for that. I, I trust me, like that's not the reason why I checked out your 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 podcast because I I started seeing. I, first, I I knew LJ. I don't know him, know him, but I I've, I've seen him in passing, and I'm like, he's a really good, you know, he's a good guy. I like his content. Yes, um, he's dope. Yeah, I like his content. Um, keeping it real with you, I've wanted to start a podcast for like two years. I've never done it. And I have so many ideas. I just don't know how to do it. You understand? Okay. So let me, That's let me part drop, of it. Let, let me drop something in there. So we all about empowering here. If you, I can give you my email address. I can help you. I started the podcast not too long ago. If you need any help, any direction, it's not as hard as people think it is, guys. It's all about stop thinking that everything's going to be perfect and just dive right in. Because you know what? You someone who has great perspective. You someone that can give somebody something and they walk away with it. A male your age who's probably going through a similar situation that you're going through and you're able to talk him through. You need to jump on this podcast. Appreciate that. Well, the thing with me, here's the thing. I, and I've always been told this and a lot of people use it in a negative context. They say that I'm too opinionated and I am. I'm very opinionated, but I don't think there's such thing as being too opinionated. No. It's just be, being real, having... It's having vision. I look at it like having vision. You have vision. You observe things. You see things not just for what they are, but you see things for what they're not and what they could be. Absolutely. That's Agreed. how I see. That's how I see the world. And you know what? Let me tell you something. A man your age being opinionated is pretty damn dope. So don't stop being who you are. That's amazing. And you see that that's the very thing that we talk about here, mamas. Something that you may think is a flaw, other people may gravitate to. Other people may like, like, look at you in a house full of women because, you know, we're trying to grow our man pot, you know, our, our man fan. So thank you yeah, for coming yeah. on and being authentic and being a real one. If you know any other men who would like to join in the conversation, it's like this every Friday and Saturday here. We welcome everybody to come on our platform to talk and highlight their business. So what do you have going on on the business front? Sure. So um, thank you. So, um, so Santos Threads, first of all, Santos Threads, we sell... Um, men and women's apparel and accessories. Uh, we also added jewelry. So I just opened up shop this year. So, um, you know, it's a one man person, pretty much one man army. Um, what's, what's your, what's your, do you have a website? Do you have an Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is my Instagram. So, okay. um, Santos. Threads, yeah. So at Santos thread shop, that's my Instagram. So I guess I could, I could probably write it in there. Yeah, but, you can write it. You can write it in the comments. Also, right. do you have do you have a website? Yeah. Yes. And what yes. do you guys sell again? Can you can you go yeah. into specifics? Yes. Yes. Definitely. So we have. All right. So we sell certain name brand goods. So we got t shirts. We have hats. We have pants. We have jeans. We have athleisure gear, and we also have. You can see this right here. This is my own line. I also sell my own line. So this is my own brand right here. Okay. This is my own brand. Um, I have nice. graphic tea. Yeah. So basically it's, it's, it's streetwear, but it's all, but it's not like, it's all positivity. So for example, okay. yeah. So for example, you won't see like somebody smoking a blunt. You won't see like somebody with some middle finger doing something or drugs or guns. That's not what I want to represent. Um, used, I used my last name because it's something that resonates with me and there aren't a lot of Latinos in that position where they are able, there aren't enough, there's enough representation when it comes to a lot of things in this world. So me having that passion for fashion um, as a Latino, I wanted to have something that represented us as well, which is why I have some designs that pay homage to 
some big Latin uh, figures. I have a, a T-shirt there of Roberto Clemente. I have a T-shirt design of Celia Cruz. Um, I have some tea. I have some stuff. And I also, um, you know, dope. yeah, no, definitely. I also pay some homage to some hip hop figures. Like I got some notorious B.I.G. stuff. Um, what about Big Pun? You know, you got to have Big Pun. I got a Big Pun t-shirt with a Puerto Rican flag, man. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so listen, you guys hear it first. Hit up my man Santos. Santos, I'm going to hit you up after because I definitely want to purchase something for my son. I love supporting uh, small businesses, so I will be hitting you up to find something that I could purchase for my son because I definitely like supporting Latino and black businesses, guys. I'm all about empowerment. Do you have any questions, anything that you want to ask us here at Mama's Cocktail Hour before you go? Yeah, no, definitely. Um... Well, I know, listen, I know the, the hours now. I know the times, the hours of operation. Um, hours of operation. Operation, um, I followed you definitely, you know, the, and the support is mutual too, by the way. Like, oh, uh, real, yeah, the, the support is mutual as well. So anything you need from us, uh, you know, you want to collab on anything, you want to, you know, I'm here too for you guys as I well know. because not only are you, you also, you know, of our people, but you're also a woman as well. So you're women as well. It's double. So, Facts. you know, that's the kind of woman I was born from. So, Woo! you know. You say all the right things. You're about to jump back in the comments. If you don't have a girlfriend, you're probably about to find one, Santos. <laughs> I'm off the market. <laughs> oh, okay, you're off the market. All right, well, thanks so much for joining. Be back Friday and Saturday because you never know when we might need your perspective again. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anytime, love. All right, have a good one. Thank you. Take care. You too. Okay, Santos, that was dope, guys. That was dope, that was dope, that was dope. See, it's really not that bad, guys. Jumping on with us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yo, we got Damo in here. Damo, my bad for you jumping on, and then I don't even know what happened. It was can weird. She, can she come back in? Damo, try to come back on, please. Yo, you know what's crazy? Like, I heard you say, can I see Jack? Ja I, I don't know where she's at. Like, I can, I saw you. I suck. Let me see if I can send her um, an invite. Damo, I'm about to request you, girl. I hope you didn't. It's okay, because if we don't get you, if we don't get you. Oh, listen, it just told me that Damo needs, Damo, hold on. It says that you need to update your Instagram. Instagram, um, hey love, it's coming on as an Instagram phone call. Can everybody see? Hold on, hold on. Let me not mess anything. Up. Okay, hold on. Let me see. I don't know what was going on. Hold on, Damo, do me a favor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Don't request me. I'm gonna request you. Hold on. Let me see. Because it, it's saying something about your app. I think you're calling me on Instagram. Yeah. Hold on. I'm going I'm I'm to send it to her right now. Hold on, girl. Um, I just, just sent you a... I think, I think she's calling me on Instagram. Hold on. Damo, I just sent a request. See that request and see if you can answer that. on as an Instagram FaceTime. Yeah. Dumbo, try to hop off, update, your, delete the app, get it again, and come back on, please, because I don't know, it, when you calling me, you calling me like a FaceTime Instagram video, which I didn't know they had, by the way, folks, until somebody FaceTimed me the other day, and <laughs> we real ones here at Mama's Cocktail Hour, and I answered the damn phone, like, yo, what's up? <laughs> Now, don't be calling me at no midnight, 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, because you're going straight to voicemail. But um, I thought I would, I thought that was funny. But I what like did you that. think about his perspective? I really, really like that. I, I, I thought it was a great perspective. Um, Shout out to Santos. For being you brave. You held your own. Yes, Being you did. brave. <laughs> so, um, hello, official young, I'm messing his name up. 
Oh, no, he was saying hi to Damo. Okay, Damo, got somebody in the comments looking for you, girl. Hold on, this is still coming off. This is so weird. Hold on, let me add one more person. No, no, no. Are you... Okay. All right. I don't know what's going on, love. I'm sorry. We're going to have to set something up so that you can come on. Right. Yeah, I'm about to jump off right now. I'll see you back in the comments. Get back on the comments. All right. All right. I don't know what's going on. going on guys instagram is the the three thing is hard you guys got to update your app i don't know it's it's a couple of things here but anyways good perspective yeah i was about to take his head off when 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 the surgery do you hear me no what's going on hold on guys we having some technical difficulties Hello? Nothing? Guys, I may need to sign off and sign back on. I'm sorry. Hello, do you hear me? Or no? Hey, hey. can anybody hear me? Jump in the comments. It's that 5G. 